Yeah, so this is the first paper on artificial disk coming from uh, Bristol. Uh, the device was called um, Bristol Cummins and then it was bought by Medtronic and evolved to Prestige 1, 2 and Prestige ST. And as you can see, uh, Nuvasiv uh, also bought a patent and as you can see, they paid a lot of money for that in 2004. So um, now this became a multi-billion dollar um, industry. Uh, this was a search that I did back in 2008 on artificial disk. You see the number of the papers. And uh, this is the search that I, uh, that I did now nearly 10 times more for 10 years. So it's a relatively new technology, uh, but all of the information that we have is only over the last 20 years. <clears throat> And uh, as you can see here, this is the first two uh, implants that have been approved in uh, US that was, uh, uh, both, of the, both of the devices were Medtronic owned. And then by 2009, uh, on the market had been available only Prestige, Brian and ProDisc, which is Synthes, but uh, many other had been on the pipeline. So what are the indications and contraindications for uh, total disc replacement respectively for um, ACDF? So we have a patient with radiculopathy or myelopathy with a single or now we know that we are safe to do also multi-level disease. And when it's not recommended, when you have uh, significant spondylosis, facet joint arthrosis, if you have a too mobile segment, if it's too much collapsed, if you have instability, if you have kyphosis, if you have uh, significant LPLL. So, uh, however, um, you have quite often patients with uh, multi-level uh, disease and the disease and at the different levels is on a different stage of development. And that's why uh, you can consider these um, hybrid solutions. These are the papers that everybody quotes uh, when talks about um, uh, CDR. I'm not going to be exclusion of that. We know that 3% of the patients per year develop uh, adjacent segment disease and 25% in the first 10 years. Uh, so that is why uh, and that is what is driving the, um, the, the CDR industry now. And these have been the first randomized trials that came after a couple of years of observation. But all these people, they have been blamed that they took money for that. Uh, luckily, later on, they've been rehabilitated, as you can see now. And as Asif also showed that uh, it's more than 400% uh, percent revision procedures, uh, more in, in the ACDF group after seven years comparing to the CDR. And then there is also a significant savings um, in the CDR group compared, comparing to the ACDF. So what do we know now? We know that single level ACDF restricts the range of movement with about 7%. We know also that uh, two level fusion, fusion will uh, multiply that percentage. We know that the adjacent segment uh, will, uh, will have increased pressure, intradiscal pressure with 50% if it's above, and we have up to 125% below. We have also development of significant um, um, share, uh, share uh, forces, and as a result of this, we have significant increase of the uh, degenerative process. Uh, so, uh, that is why hybrid solutions uh, could, be, uh, could be considered. And uh, they appear to be safe as per this paper. They are safe at least as much as uh, CDR or ICDF alone. And uh, we know that uh, the, uh, the hybrid solutions, they preserve the overall range of, range of motion of the, of the C-spine. So, um, <clears throat> We know from, from the biomechanical studies that uh, the instantaneous center of rotation is a parameter that uh, is used to detect abnormal or respectively normal C-span movement. So both CDR and hybrid surgery uh, preserve the normal uh, instantaneous center of rotation as per, as per this paper, but we still lack high quality of uh, uh, multi-level de degenerative disc disease treatment with uh, ACDS, CDR, and hybrid solutions. So we have to still wait, although we have now seven-year follow-ups. We have concerns as well with, uh, with this technique. 
Uh, we, we know that the heterotopic classification is one of the uh, mostly quoted uh, uh, problems. Uh, in some publications, up to 63%. Uh, long surgical times and increased blood loss, not in my hands, but people are quoting it in the paper, so that's why I put it here. Uh, in, my, in my opinion, uh, CDR is, um, has less surgical time and less, incre and inc less blood loss. Uh, spinal malalignment, osteo osteolysis, vertebral body fracture. Uh, I've seen a paper uh, reporting on um, on the, on the on fracture vertebral body fracture with the single kill devices when they are aligned uh, one after the other with uh, a treating multi-level disease uh, you can have implant displacement you can have uh, metal hypersensitivity you can have uh, lordosis uh, problems disc height so um, also there is a paper that uh, shows that there is significantly higher uh, CDA uh, revision costs if you, and morbidity. If you compare the uh, CDA revisions with ACDF revisions, then uh, the, uh, the clinical data suggests that uh, it is more favorable to uh, address ACDF as a revision case than CDA or, or um, hybrid solutions. And this was pointed by ASIF as well. However, with the new devices, which are smaller, then probably this is not a big problem. So that's it, thank you. I use that device. Uh, this is uh, formerly K2M, now, uh, now uh, it's uh, Striker. And I'm happy with it. Thank you. <laughs>